Okay, the sub should have passed out a Unit 11 test prep planning sheet, and I just want to talk through this just a little bit. Um, also, I want to let you know, particularly because I'm not here today, on Friday, I will be available after school and before school every day from now until Friday, but Friday at about 7.45, I will be running a review session um, for Unit 11. It's totally voluntary, but anyone who had, la who had last minute questions that I couldn't address because I wouldn't, couldn't be there today, um, you can come in Friday morning around 7.45 and I can clear anything up that you might need. Okay, So what you do need to do on this sheet, we saw some of these last semester. Uh, first of all, and I will be checking it off, I will be collecting on a Friday before the test, so fill it out. But more importantly, here is what's in Unit 11. Okay, Unit A, 11A is types of mixtures and electrolytes. Um, <clears throat> 11B is dissolution factors and solubility, 11C is molarity, dilution, and solubility rules, and 11D is colligative properties, which really is just definition of two terms, and then net ionic equations. So the first thing that we've seen, I want you to go ahead and, and figure out where you are comfort level with all the vocab. Um, you can, <clears throat> excuse me, do that to kind of rate yourself. And then also, here are some of the skills and concepts that we need to be familiar with. Um, some of it is a little bit older, which I know, but we've seen it in the last few weeks, so it shouldn't be totally foreign, but one is drawing Lewis dot structures, two is identifying intermolecular forces and polarity, and now remember, from your Lewis dot structure, essentially you're going to figure out if something is polar, and polar is usually going to mean, for example, like with water, if we have central or electrons coming off of that central atom, or if you just have a side of the atom that's more electronegative than the rest, okay? So this is hydriotic acid. Both of these would be polar or nonpolar. Now from that, now a nonpolar one would be anything without any lone pairs, okay? So anything without lone pairs. So even something, you know, where they, a carbon chain no lone pairs off of those central atoms were nonpolar. Now in terms of intermolecular forces, remember the only option for nonpolar is London dispersion. That's it. If it's nonpolar, it's automatically London dispersion. With polar you have two options. The first one, which is described by water, is hydrogen bonding. Now I know it's hydrogen bonding because I have hydrogen as well as one of the big three, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Okay, and, and it's a, hydrogen bonding is a little misleading because it has to be hydrogen and one of these three. For example, over here you'll, no, here you'll notice there's lots of hydrogens, but there's no, um, it's not hydrogen bonding because it's not paired with nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Now the other option which is illustrated by hydriotic acid is dipole-dipole. Okay, now with dipole-dipole, it's when it's polar, but you don't have hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Okay, so it's hydriotic acid here. Now one other thing that you still should be familiar with is your molecular geometry. Okay, you need to be able to know how to do that. One of the easiest ways for those is if you go to Quizlet, um, you will find a Unit 11 Quizlet as well as Molecular Geometry Quizlet. So it's there, you just got to go back and review it. It's easy points because it's a matter of just having it all memorized. Okay, then you've got, so and again if we come back to our samples over here, um, you always have to look at the central atom. So for this one right here, this central carbon, for example this would be tetrahedral, 109.5 degrees. Um, this one is automatically linear. 180 because there's only two atoms, so it's 180 degrees. And then this one is bent 104.5 because you have two lone pairs and two bonding groups off of that cent oops, off of that central atom. Okay, so that's oops. Okay, well you get the picture. There, that right there had oxygen, which was two bonding groups and two lone pairs. So that's where we get the bent 104.5. And then the last piece to this would be figuring out which one was which one's mixed and which ones didn't. The two that would mix out of this group would be the water and the hydriotic acid because they have the same polarity. Okay, if they have the same polarity, they will mix. The nonpolar will not mix with the polar. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, molarity and dilution math problems. You'll get your quiz back on this right before you take your test on Friday, so you'll get some feedback. Most people did really, really well. Um, now, we mentioned this the other day, but one thing that is different is you have to also um, be able to 
be able to describe the steps to making a solution or a dilution like we did in lab. So you've got to be specific, you've got to use the names for things, you should mention things like the meniscus, I'm just going to go away, but let's see if it'll stay over here, oh there we go, okay. You should mention things like the meniscus on the volumetric flask, um, and it's either going to be a solution or a dilution, so you got to make sure that you're specific um, on those things, but there will be a question that you have to describe that process like we did in lab the other day. Um, determining if compounds are soluble or insoluble, predicting products, and this is all net ionic reactions that we've been doing. Okay, now some reminders, anything in the notes slash videos is fair game for the test as well as this old stuff. There obviously still will be naming, there will still be balancing equations. That's not going away as well. Um, so you may want to review some of those things. And then the last thing that I want you to do, uh, what you will have is a periodic table, solubility rules chart, and the not common polyatomic ions. So these are the things that you will be given everything else you've got to know. So the last couple of things I want you to do is to set a realistic goal for yourself on this test. Use percentages. I think you want to get a 90 percent, 80 percent, what's best for you. And then what types of activities can you, should you actually partake in in the next couple of days. Um, you could rewatch the lecture videos, go back over your study guides, you've got Quizlet, you could attend the review session. Okay, so there are definitely some things that you could do. And again, the review session is going to be 745, oops, 745 on Friday morning in my room. Totally voluntary, but hopefully that will help guide you as to what you need to know for the test. And um, you're going to watch a few videos here to just review, <coughs> excuse me, some of the concepts that you're going to need to cover in, whoa, um, Unit 11. Okay, good luck, and I'll see you on Friday.